So Cain, Abel, and the Lamb. Now, the reason we're going through this scripture is because we see Jesus. We see the good news of Jesus Christ in this bit of scripture here in Genesis chapter 4 in the story of Cain and Abel. And many people would say, yeah, I don't know about that. But you, I promise you, you're going to see that in this episode, my friend, because it, it'll bless your heart. Now, Adam had sexual relations with his wife, Eve, and she became pregnant. And when she gave birth to Cain, she said, with the Lord's help, I have produced a man or the man. Like this is the one who would crush Satan's head or bruise Satan's head, right? So then it continues here in verse two later, she gave birth to his brother and named him Abel. And when they grew up, Abel became a shepherd while Cain cultivated the ground. And when it was time for the harvest, Cain presented some of his crops as a gift to the Lord. And Abel also brought a gift, the best of the firstborn lambs from his flock. The best of the firstborn lambs of his flock. The Lamb of God is what Jesus was called, right? Remember John the Baptist, he said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb. And not only that, Abel, it says in Hebrews, by faith he brought the better sacrifice or the better offering, right? And he brought the choicest, the choicest of the lamb. In other words, the best of the best. It wasn't his second, secondary stuff. It was the best. And Cain probably did not bring uh, the good, the best of the fruit because God rejected it, right? So Abel also brought a gift, the best of the firstborn lambs from his flock, Remember, Jesus was the firstborn of Mary, of the Virgin Mary, and he was called the Lamb of God. And he was born at Bethlehem, which is interesting because Bethlehem is where the priest of that time in Jerusalem would purchase the approved lambs. They were all born in that Bethlehem region. Very interesting stuff, you guys. So let's, let's keep going in this right now. So we know that uh, John the Baptist called Jesus the Lamb of God, takes away the sins of the world. And then in Genesis 4, it continues, the Lord accepted Abel and his gift, but he did not accept Cain and his gift. So here in Hebrews, in the New Testament, it says, by faith, it tells us, by faith, Abel offered to God a better sacrifice than Cain, through which he was attested to be righteous. And God testifying about his gifts and through faith, though he is dead, he still speaks like right now, right? But this made Cain, remember in the scripture says this made Cain very angry when God accepted his brother Abel's sacrifice and rejected his and he looked dejected. So I'm going to go back to this. God testifying about his gifts and through faith, I'm talking about Abel here, though he is dead, he still speaks. What does that mean? He's speaking to us right now through these scriptures. We're talking about his story and how awesome it was. So here we are, guys. So, so Cain was extremely angry and he looked dejected. And then verse six of Genesis four, it says, why are you so angry? The Lord asked Cain, why do you look so dejected? You will be accepted if you do what is right. But if you refuse to do what is right, then watch out. Sin is crouching at the door, eager to control you. Sin is crouching at the door like an animal, right? And, and what does it say in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8? Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Isn't that interesting? It goes along with the story of Cain and Abel. So Genesis 4 continues, but you must subdue it, God tells Cain. You must subdue it 
and, and be its master. But one day Cain suggested to his brother, let's go out into the fields. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and he killed him. So this is the first mention of a murder in the Bible, you guys, the very first mention. So there's, when there's a first mention like that, it, it usually it means it's, there's great importance and you need to pay attention to it. So then afterward, let's go to the scripture. So afterwards, the Lord asked Cain, where is your brother? Where is Abel? Now, God asks sometimes. He doesn't have to ask, but even Jesus did that, right? And he's God, by the way, God the Son. He asks to get you to think about what you did. He already knows the answer. He's just getting you to open up and talk about it and for you to understand. That's why he does that. And then Cain said, I don't know. Cain responded, am I my brother's guardian? Or some scriptures say my brother's keeper. Oh, yeah, we are to be our brother's keeper and our sister's keeper, right? That's what God wants us to be. And he responded, am I my brother's guardian? And then in 1 John chapter 3, what does it say? What did John write in his old age here in 1 John? We are to love one another. Not as Cain, who was of the evil one. Who's the evil one? Satan. And murdered his brother. And for what reason did he murder him? Because of his own deeds. His own deeds were evil. But his brothers were righteous. And then Jude also records this. Who, who, woe to them. Woe to them. For they gave, or excuse me, for they have gone the way of Cain. The way of Cain. What's the way of Cain? Right here. Am I my brother's keeper? He asks to God in a real snarky way, right? Am I my brother's keeper, God? Do I have to watch out for my brother? Yes, you do. Jesus said they will know you by your love for one another. It's hard sometimes, you guys. I know. <laughs> it's if We're human. We still have that flesh to deal with as Christians that, you know, we need to subdue our flesh. And, and, and it's only by the power of the Holy Spirit living in us and God filling us daily that we have power over our flesh. But we must love one another. We must live by the Spirit, walk in the Spirit. And that's where we find power to overcome. But here, my friend, we're in Jesus in the Old Testament, the series. And here again, we see in the story of Cain and Abel, the lamb, the lamb. And we see by faith, Abel uh, brought the lamb of God. <laughs> I'm not saying lamb of God. That's not what it says in scripture, but I'm saying it as far as a, a picture and a foreshadowing goes. This was the lamb that God accepted, right? All right. So, hey, don't forget to hit this playlist right here, Jesus in the Old Testament. You're going to get plenty more episodes. We're just starting. We're in Genesis. We have, we have plenty we already did, and there's more to come, my friend. Love you.